this time around we're going to be changing uh, this logo that is here. I'm using Classic Press right now, which is a fork of WordPress. Uh, however, it works in the same way. What we're going to do actually works in the same way. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, last time we managed to make our admin area a little more clean and less uh, less crowded. And we were able to change also our post type of posts into news. Today I just want to use our activated plugin that we're using, which is an editor's guide. And what we're going to do is we are going to log out of here and we're going to change this logo for WordPress and Classic Press, which is a fork of WordPress. So they both work in the same way. And if I actually inspect this element, you're going to realize that uh, this is just a link that has a background image here that you can actually change and you can change it in uh, the CSS. However, when I quickly Google for how I can tap into this uh, using code, there's actually a part in the WordPress codex that uh, tells us how we can customize this login form and make it ours. And they actually give us a code sample of uh, what we can use here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this information that is here and I'll just drag our folder here that we use, uh, that is our plugin and then when I go inside here I'm actually going to just paste this code block here and then I'll explain what goes on. So we actually tap into an admin, an, a WordPress hook that's, uh, that's called a login queue scripts and this action is uh, going to run our function here and what our function is going to do is that it is going to <laughs> It is going to add some style uh, which is CSS and it's going to target this particular CSS code. It's going to look for the login, uh, ID login, for the header tag and then the link that's embedded in there. And then the next thing that it's going to do is that it's going to change um, this particular background image. And we can actually just make this any image that we can come up with. For example, if I just quickly run here and go to maybe pexels.com where they are loyalty free pictures, I don't want to have any issues with a copyright infringement. So if I quickly go to um, someone who's, let's just use this eye. So I'll just get the link to this image. So I get the link to this image and what I'm going to do is come here and I'm going to change this background image by deleting this and then I'll put this link and click save. And if we quickly go back to our login page and reload, we actually see that we get a big image here of this eye. So there are a number of things we can do to this to make it a, a little better. And we can actually still add style uh, using our code block that we have actually added here. So the first thing was to change the image. Next is to change um, the particular styling. But I want to go for a different angle. Uh, when we log into our WordPress uh, usually, uh, when we log into our WordPress and then we go into our customizer, we actually in most cases will have themes that are supporting a logo to be added. So I want to use this logo that is added maybe from our theme, uh, maybe it's a particular company or business that has added the logo there. Then the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to use this same logo that we are having here and then we'll use it on the back end of our uh, login page. So the first thing that actually we're going to deal with is uh, trying to add this logo supporting our theme, let's say if our theme did not support that logo uh, addition via the customizer. So when you come to WordPress, this is already embedded or in classic press. So you would use this in your functions.php or you can use uh, a plugin to add this. So you can add theme support and then you add custom logo. And then what you can do is you can add a bunch of uh, properties to that custom logo, maybe the height, the fixed width. However, this will only work if you're adding it in the theme, in the, when you tap into the hook that's called after theme setup in your particular 
theme. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to pick this whole block of code here, so that uh, I, even if I add it through my plugin right here, right above this code, and paste it, I know that I'll tap into the after theme, after setup theme support hook, and then I'll run my particular function, and then I'll add theme support for that logo to be so. So this is all the information you need to add to your logo. So since my theme already it supports uh, the logo already, I don't need to add this block of code. So I can just I'm just going to comment this out since I don't need it anymore, and then I'll just focus on this code. So let me just drive this down. I'll just put it at the bottom since I don't need it, but you can always refer to it. And I'm going to come back to our block that we do have here. So the way we tap into this information that is already in the customizer is we use a function called get theme mode uh, to get the information here. But again, since this is already embedded in the classic press or the WordPress core, there is an easy way of getting this information. Again, if you scroll down this page we were in on the codex, uh, codex.wordpress.org slash theme underscore logo, you find that we can actually output that particular logo by using this function which checks if there is a custom logo, then we can throw the custom logo back in here. Or if we want to actually tackle the HTML and make it our own, we can actually just go and get only the URL or the link that goes to that particular image. So we shall get theme mode which is going to go and tap into the customizer itself, and then look for the ID of custom logo as we set it up using our after theme, uh, after using this function uh, that is tapping into the after theme setup theme, and then we'll save the information that we'll save this ID, and then just drop it to get the attachment that is this particular image here. So next we'll go and say, you know what, there's something that's being thrown out, we're going to dump all this information so you will see how this actually comes out, and so we'll get the first item that comes back from Mare, because when we query uh, WP get attachment image source, we get a bunch of information that's attached to that particular image that we've uploaded. So we can actually just choose through the array just using PHP, and then we'll find the image link. So let's jump right into that. <coughs> so what I'm going to do first here is actually go and upload an image that I want to use as my logo. So I'm going to look for this I this image that I made for uh, that's just a funny guitar logo and then I'm going to just add it, and immediately you see that since this thing supports images and it supports the logos coming out, it already shows you in the customizer, so we're going to save this here, and what I'm going to do next is actually I'm going to log out of our, our administration area, and then we shall be able to see what's going on here. So we still have our old image that we're using to test, to test, and we're now going to jump into the code. So what we're going to do now is actually we're going to test uh, this particular code that we we got from that we're going to get from our codex. I'm just going to copy the whole thing. We'll inspect it to see what what is displayed. So we'll see. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to print out each line. And then I'll use the PHP line to var dump whatever we are getting. We look for some information. So I'm going to get the custom logo ID that we've been saving here. And then I'm going to use the WP die rule. So I'll use WP die uh, to just stop whatever is running. Now, if we go back to our page and reload. So when we dump the, the information from our code here, we actually see that we get an integer of 30, 
and that is basically the ID of their attachment. Uh, now that remember that attachments are also custom post types in our WordPress. Now we are getting the ID of uh, this from our customizer and we are going to pass it into this function of WordPress that says we need to get the attachment ID source that has the ID of 30 but we want to get it in full. Uh, we want to get the full size of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to change what we are dumping out. So I'm going to save this and then when I reload our page here we actually see that we get back an array that has four pieces of information and the first piece of information is a string which is a URL of our image. The next piece is uh, giving us an integer of 240 and we have 240 here and we have a boolean which is false. Now if I if I was to actually go into the codex and find out what does this function actually do? So I'm going to open my browser and drop this into Google and find out what it does. So if we go to the codex again we're going to find out what information is given back. So when we pass in the ID, the attachment ID and the size of what we want, we actually get back, this is what we get back, we get an array that has a URL which is a link, we get the width, we get the height and we get whether it is intermediate. This is the information we get back. Remember when we were setting our, our particular when we were using this code here to set the height and width, it's different for every theme so you can set your particular width and height that you want to get. So the next thing that we are going to do now is that we saw that in our array of the information we are getting is we had item 0 or the first item in our array was the string and that is what we want. So what we are going to do is just use PHP again and say um, we just want to echo only the first item in what we've said. This is a variable that we've said. We just want to get only the first item, which is item zero. And so I'm going to just get this. I'm just going to add these brackets and add zero. And then we're going to see what we are actually dumping. So I'll just save this again, reload. And we'll see that we are only getting this string. So this is the information that we need and that is what we can drop actually in our background here. So what I'm going to do is I remove the die and the echo. So after cleaning out the space that is here, what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to replace whatever is here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this link that is here. Uh, we're going to copy this function uh, that is here and we're going to place it into PHP quotes here and say we have our PHP here and our function. Now what we also need to do is we're going to get our integer or our ID of our post type or the attachment post type ID and we're going to query it from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say let us echo whatever we get out of this function being queried and when, once we've passed in all those parameters. So I'll just remove this since we don't need it here. So after saving this here, we're going to go back and we'll reload and we actually see that there's nothing here. So what I'll do is I'll quickly inspect to find out and we'll see that in our background image we have an array here. So that was our error, we forgot to actually add that we want only the first item in the array uh, because array starts from uh, 0 all the way upwards to 1, 2, 3, so in position 1 we have 0, position 2 we have 1, position 3 would be uh, number 2, so once I save this again we're actually now just going to have the image coming in as the URL sorry, uh, this shouldn't be here it should be actually at the end because we want to get the array at the end of this. So once I save this and then go back here and reload, we actually see our image that we uploaded from our browser and it actually comes here and we have it sorted here. So the next thing that we can do is actually we can 
decide to make this a uh, better looking and give it a lot of CSS to make it look nice. Oh, we would have saved an image that is actually maybe with these dimensions that we have here. This is how we make our login page better. And there are a couple of other things that we can change. For example, we can change the URL so that it's not going outside, so that it's not going outside to any other place. And we can even change the title of uh, this particular link when we hover over so that it's not saying maybe part by WordPress or by Classic Press. So if we go back to our codex and scroll all the way down, there are also other functions that you can tap into and these ones are filters. Um, remember filters are also hooks into WordPress but filters expect information and often also return information. So that's why you see that once this we log we use the login header URL filter it's expecting to return. Um, this is a function in WordPress that gets the URL of your particular um, where your server, your domain. And then if you look at the second filter it's saying uh, we can change the login header title and we can give it anything that we do want. For example this is your site name and information. So once we save this or we can actually say let us make it very dynamic. So I'm going to use a blog info which is a function of our WordPress and I'm going to say now instead of this I want to add the name of my uh, website. Once I save and reload and come back here we're actually going to see that our URL has changed which is uh, you see this is blog gallery which is you have here and our title is empty because we're actually echoing it here. You can see this is saying lightbox gallery. So what I'm going to do is just go back here because I made an, uh, an error. Uh, blog info actually echoes. We can use the title of our, of our blog or we can even use the description which is uh, usually the, the tagline that we give to our particular blog. So we can also change that and make it just another WordPress um, like we want. Or we can even make a blend of both. So it's up to you to do what you want to have there. So um, I'll just join up these two but I at this point we've actually made what we wanted to do. So this is just doing something extra. I'm just joining two pieces of information here. So I'll save this so that we have Lightbox Gallery which is just another WordPress site. Well good and done with this tutorial. I thank you for watching and staying with me for over this long period of time and I hope you like the video. If you like it please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel. We have a number of things that are going to be coming out next and we always do these small small challenges also coming in. So feel free to leave a question, leave a comment, uh, give direction or give us a how would you want to do this um, in the comment section. And just to note that uh, Classic Press in itself is uh, dealing with this, this thing um, just to help websites better brand themselves. Uh, Classic Press is actually um, making this part of the core. Right now they are, they, they are working on how to change this to be part of the core so that whenever you upload a logo in your theme it automatically gives you your a logo coming up here. Um, the other thing is that it will default to the Classic Press logo if you don't have a theme supporting the logo, but now you know, so you can do it for yourself. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.